wow, yesterday's Enterprise. <laughs> I, I don't even know where to start. There's there's so much to jump into and talk about. Uh, yeah, there is a lot to unpack there, and I can't wait to jump right in. And there's no time like the present. So let's get... Wait, we're still... Oh, what happened? Not again. Wait. No, I'm still over here, and you're still over there. Wait, yeah, yeah. What? My shirt's changed. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, oh my God. Hold on, hold on. Oh, oh. Oh. We're good. Nothing's wrong. All right. Okay. We're, we're, that was strange. Okay, we're good. We're good. Anyway, let's get started on our discussion about the newest Star Wars Disney Plus series, The Acolyte. What? What, what are you talking about? The Acolyte? Yeah, what, what do you mean? We just watched The Acolyte. Oh, no, we didn't. Like, Star Wars? We're not watching Star Wars. Alex, we've been watching Star Wars ever since the Book of Boba Fett got us a million subscribers two years ago. Enterprise from the past rips through time and alters the future. I'm supposed to be dead. Now, Lieutenant Yar lives again to help the crew fight a devastating battle. This war is not supposed to be happening. You've got to send those people back to correct this. And one courageous team must die to save the Federation from destruction on Star Trek The Next Generation. <laughs> God damn it! God, these fucking teasers, man. Jesus Christ. That reminds me, we actually didn't watch the teaser for the last episode of Matter of Perspective. We just didn't watch it. And editing it back, they literally spoil the ending. They show the guy, uh, like, shooting the beam at Riker and it bouncing back and it blowing up the thing. Of course, it's not in context, but they yeah. show that happening. Yeah, I'm not sure if you watch the teaser and start watching the episode, you probably put it together, <laughs> yeah. what happened. It says something like, it might cost Riker his life, and, like, shows him blowing up. Oh, my God. I mean, that's bad, too. That's that's bad. It's terrible. It's just te <laughs> like, I, I don't get it, but... I mean, they gave away Tasha, like... You can't defend it. Like, you can't be like, oh, out of context, you don't know. It's like they, Tasha's it's in it. It's a big fucking deal. Yeah. It's like, maybe some, like, I don't know, dad off work. Oh, look, it's the blonde. <laughs> yeah, she's back. Oh, my God. And then, like, just showing Riker dead at the end. It's like, yeah. oh, my God. It's, and didn't they already say, like, an alternate timeline? Anyway, we're not here to discuss the trailer. Yeah. So I love this episode. Oh, yeah, it's great. This was a banger for sure, and uh, it's up there. It's gotten to the point already this season where I can't definitively say anything in terms of, like, which one is my favorite anymore because there's been so, uh, you know, a handful of my love for, like, different reasons. Right, right. And this was another one that I really, really love for different reasons that other episodes haven't given me. Yeah, I just love when TV can make me ha have that, you know, jump out, oh, my God, reaction, and just seeing, I did not expect to see Tasha Yar. You know what I mean? What a wonderful genuine surprise i would love to know the behind the scenes on what like hey guess what you're coming back uh i love the fake out of the mirror mirror universe i thought just like similar to beginning of season one okay they're checking off their boxes of what other tos ideas can we do again but like slightly different but no this was almost like a pull the rug out from under us lieutenant what are their sensor readings i'm getting too much interference captain they like slowly revealed like why it didn't like, oh this happened because this. It's like we're like what the fuck? like when they said C I'm like what Enterprise C and you're still thinking like is one like is the other one the C and like, just trying to figure everything out while it's happening was so fun because I love that I guess I love like trying to figure things out while like everything's still in motion. Yeah, this episode was fun. Yeah, and they already did an episode messing with time with Times Squared where the Picard you know, comes into the Enterprise on the shuttlecraft. Yeah, yeah, This was similar, but I think this was more well executed in the explanation. It just was, like, worked perfectly. As soon as they explain it, where you're like, oh, I no longer have any questions about the logic. It all makes enough sense, you know. There was this tear in space, time, you know, whatever, and they're from 22 years ago. You know, they came here, and it caused a problem in their past where now this is the present. It's like, that's simple enough. You don't have to explain a whole thing like i got it yeah back to the future days of the future past you know events one change everything's changed and everyone has to live in that uh new reality like new personality except guinan because guinan i guess has been around a while and her abilities are beyond that of uh the normal space-time continuum she's she's aware of other events um and knows when things are right or wrong i thought that was 
a nice touch for Guyana. I'm glad they brought Guyana in for this one. Yep. I, th- I thought maybe Q was going to fix this somehow. <laughs> we already got a one Q episode, so I doubt it. But yeah. Oh, need me to fix things? <laughs> Guyana is the best character to do what she did in this episode. It makes sense because you can't even explain everything about Guyana, like he's like Picard says. So it totally makes totally sense that it, it isn't her from the other timeline. I loved that that they didn't just switch her. She's still aware of this timeline, and it's her from this timeline, but. Because of it's Guinan, like she has this feeling, just an intuition. Yeah. And it's the same thing when uh, Q was showing up in Q Who last season, and it showed Guinan just like intent forward, like something's off. Mm-hmm. I love that she just has this intuition and is enough to where you trust it. And Picard obviously trusts her. It's the same bridge, nothing has changed. It's wrong. One of the best scenes of the episode of them two in his quarters where she's like, you've known me for so long. You know, I don't just go off of whimsy. You know, it's up to you if you trust me. And ultimately he does, uh, you know, against the advice of Riker and and other people on the ship. It makes sense that Worf's not there, but Troy not being there was just sort of odd. We have no need for counseling. There's a war. (laughs) There's a war. I don't have time to listen to your bullshit. I wonder if there's a behind the scenes reason or if they literally just had nothing for her in the episode. But that was interesting. But then, like, why have her at the beginning and end? It was just... Just just show like we're back to normal. Yeah. I mean, mean, there has been episodes before where she's just literally there. (laughs) No lines at all. Uh, But I think that's so fascinating. Like, okay, we have to reimagine 22 years of the Enterprise. 23 years of people's lives, like, there are reasons for entering Starfleet. It's like, some are going to be there because they wanted to go out and, like, explore. But now it's like, people are enlisting to, like, basically go fight. I find that whole idea fascinating, just how much things, the ripple effect, the fact that any of those characters were there at all is, you know what I mean? It's like, a miracle. I mean... (laughs) The fact that it's as similar as it was. Yeah, yeah, I mean, because it's not a different universe. It's our universe. Yeah. So it's like, it's crazy how things change, but we're I guess it makes sense how things were the same. Because some things remained exactly the same. And Oh, by the way, there's this giant war going on. Yeah. Dead people are alive. Some people aren't even there. 40 billion people have 40, died. Yeah, from this one event. And it's the whole trolley incident, basically. It's like, do we send 125 people back to die? Or do we leave 40 billion that are dead already dead? Because they only know this as their existence. I've talked about this, I think you privately, and just maybe on here, but like the idea of like another... That's why concussions are so scary. The idea of like a different existence of you being or just like one event changes or one memory is no longer there or different and like you're not the same person you know what i mean yeah that that scares the shit out of me well also the idea too of you're only the present everything that's the past is just your memories it doesn't actually exist it's just your memories so Uh at any given moment you you're trusting your brain is telling you the truth about what the past is and so for these characters their past isn't the correct one necessarily, but to them it is. Like to them, it's real because that's the present they're existing in. Except for Guinan, she's the only one that can kind of tell what's different. Yeah, but your past shapes and your experiences shape exactly who you are at the present. Though that's that's the scary part. You take one of those things away, it can change so much. You know? Yeah. And perfect example is Picard in this episode. He's so different than the Picard we know, mm-hmm. but it's believable because they're in a wartime situation. He, who knows how long in total he's been in Starfleet, but he's gone through the fleet 20 years of this war. What has he seen? What has he experienced? He's obviously still made it to captain of the Enterprise. Mm -hmm. Bit rougher around the edges. If you'd like my opinion. I think I'm aware of your opinion, Commander. This is a briefing. I'm not seeking your consent. Patrick Stewart knocked it out of the park here. It almost like is a different level than what we've seen of him. I think actually a good comparison would be Mirror Spock from Leonard Nimoy having to play a completely different character for this one episode. But you're still Picard, but it's different. Yeah, and it's not too much. Like he wasn't like, Whoa! You know what I mean? It's just a little more stern. And, like, Riker's a little bit more like, Sir, I don't agree with this. And, like, I understand. You know, I heard you. You know, Yeah, like, he's like, I'm not asking for your consent. Yeah, like, a little more, like, you know. Yeah, Ooh. and he did have the moment, like, with Guiney when he, like, smacked the table. You know, like, yeah. the aggression letting out a little bit. But it wasn't, you know, you know, Dwight giving a speech. You know, it, it wasn't like that. It was yeah. just like, that's great. Just a little bit more. Just, like, just a little bit more. Yeah, awesome. Uh, Wesley wearing a uniform. It's a nice touch. They all had different uniforms, which I thought looked really cool. I like the belt. The belt was my favorite. <laughs> that belt was badass. I want one of those. It definitely gave me 90s low-waisted jeans vibe belt. Everyone in the 90s, you know, was very like... Uh, but the whole look of the episode, it felt like it could be a movie, a Star Trek movie. It all looked cinematic, polished. The lighting was great. That one shot in particular 
where the light on Picard's eyes. I'm like, this is a TOS shot. Yeah, he stepped right into the light and yeah. the light was up here. I'm like, that, I'm like, I don't, maybe it wasn't a direct homage, but I was just like so happy to see it because, you know, I'll be honest, like, I I'm missing that cinematic feel, whether it's a 60s feel or specifically to Star Trek, I don't know because I haven't watched a lot of 60s TV, but that feel is really missing a lot in TNG. And as much as I love the character stuff and the plot, you know, you know, all that, it, you know, the bridge being so bright and everything looking like a TV show, you know, TOS just had like this gritty feel that I felt like this episode was able to capture. But now it, it it's like when something shows you what it can do, and then we go back to the regular bridge at the end, and now next episode's probably going to be that regular bridge. It's like, but wait, you showed me you could do that, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I mean, it's Star Trek showing us the bright future, right? <laughs> Apparently, I've heard a new Trek is dark and grim, so you'll get that eventually. But, and, and not like good dark and grim, like bad yeah. dark. But it doesn't have to be like dark and grim. Like, TOS isn't grim it's just like oh no i mean i mean but the bridge the bridge in tos was lit up pretty well it's just like this few scenes where they weren't in the bridge or even some on the bridge when something goes wrong the lights would come down mm -hmm. we need more problems on the bridge for the lights to go down I yeah guess. i think the word i'm looking for is atmosphere tos just has an atmosphere okay. to it that thus far i haven't felt in tng until this episode mm -hmm. and i really felt it strongly here yeah uh camera work is great there's a few shots where like like tosh is walking in and it's on her reflection and but like also in the reflection is picard's reflection off his uh his monitor and then like pan zooms even before the crazy stuff starts happening it actually led to a great reveal because i think it was the same shot where it's like picard uh rack focus to wharf in the back yeah rack focus back to picard and then once things go whoa and then they do the same thing rack focus on picard rack focus to tasha different lighting it's like oh shit and oh God, I'm sorry, I love that fake out. I love the whole mirror, mirror fake out. I, I just can't get over it. Where it's like, as much as I want two enterprises, <laughs> you know what I mean? And yeah. like the two Guinans have to come together to resolve this issue where they both think, you know, like one's, you know, it's Spider Man, I mean, but basically the one's like, one of you is like a lion, one of you is evil. Mm -hmm. Like, I think that'd be super fun. Yeah, for sure. I think it is it is funny that the work coming with that perspective, there's probably a bunch of TNG fans that didn't even watch Mirror Mirror and, you know... Oh, maybe. They didn't, they didn't catch that at all. Maybe, yeah, because it's the same thing. Was, I mean, yeah, very similar, yeah. Um, I guess we got to give a shout-out to our boy Worf for his prune juice. <laughs> like, prune juice is like an old lady's drink, or like, oh, I'm having bowel issues, you know, prune juice. <laughs> Worf, warrior's drink. I love it excellent opening scene one of the best to like the show's getting really good at opening character moment hook into the plot and thematically it does still connect uh i said this to you it texted to you after we watched it because we didn't say it in the discussion how in a matter of perspective the painting scene at the beginning at first we're like oh funny scene did you notice that or did a patron point it out to you uh no i did realize it but you did realize it? the okay. patrons have also pointed it out i saw i was reading the patron text I'm like oh fuck that's good <laughs> yeah now, how does prune juice relate to the alternate future can we can we can we tie that back in somewhere? yeah yeah um don't know about that but <laughs> just the idea of Worf is gone this whole episode so like you start with this scene with him we switch and now Worf's gone comes back Worf's back uh so it makes sense that it was Worf in that opening scene yeah um the Tasha reveal I'm trying to think I'm thinking Tasha reveal Bones reveal Q reveal and uh Q, Q reveal and Q who Q. those are probably our biggest pops of the series so far um, it was up there. So I guess for, for this season so far, that would probably be the biggest one. Dr. Crusher's name in the credits. So it's one uh, of those, it's one of those elite tier re reactions. Also on this one, po <laughs> same kind of hair, possibly William Shatner. I'm like, <laughs> oh yeah, I was yeah. getting ready to freak uh, out. Uh, dude, he had the, he had the red uniform on and he had that, the hair, that weird looking hair. I'm like, perm. Yeah, the perm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Shooter McGavin. Also Shooter McGavin in this episode, not a villain. Let me show you how we do it in the pros. Christopher McDonald. Christopher McDonald. Love him. Classic typecast as a villain, but I think he can play just a, a fine, sympathetic, flirty boy. Let's also give it up for Trisha O'Neill as Captain Rachel Garrett. I thought she was great. I love the scene when she's still in the bed recovering. We barely escaped with our lives. If we returned, we'd be destroyed. 
they really were able to build out this believable good captain in like maybe the three four scenes she had before her death and her death was brutal too it's funny how so many times up to this point in star trek when there'd be like an explosion on the bridge it's just like people falling over but this time it happened twice her and Riker and both just brutally killed yeah they both like uh, oh they do the, like the comical fall over oh it's great and then cut to like blood and a prosthetic piece of metal in her head like oh my god like Way to push it. We haven't had an episode where they pushed those TV boundaries in a while. Yeah. Right? Not since uh, the... Uh, the next... Conspiracy? Yeah, conspiracy. Yeah. And him blowing up and <laughs> the alien <laughs> popping out. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I just wanted to enjoy her being in the episode because I, I assume this is it. Mm. Although the ending makes me question that, but we'll, we'll get there in a little bit. But Denise Crosby, how do you think she fits into where TNG is at now because first 23 episodes it, it's a quite a different vibe for, for a lot of it yeah it's weird I would love to see her back with the regular crew to see how she fit in because she obviously she's going to fit in the wartime enterprise just perfectly there you yeah. know what I mean and now with Worf stepping up uh as security officer security chief whatever I'm just picturing what uh like what would she be doing with our crew now like I I, I don't know I, I mean I miss her obviously but you're saying if if they did do the Gamora and she came back, yeah, then, like okay. she, like I think that'd be just a fun continuing storyline where she's just trying to fit back in, and because it wouldn't be regular Tasha, it'd be I mean it's regular Tasha but to another level because it's wartime Tasha who like left, uh, you know, twenty years of war. Mm. I mean she already grew up on this tough planet and now she goes into the Enterprise or into yeah. Starfleet when it's like wartime. It's like that, she she probably thrived there. Yeah, and then they go into this world where it's completely different and then she has to you know i don't know watch the tapes of the last two seasons <laughs> you know, to catch up see her past self die see her yeah like the beginning of loki just watch herself die i know? think that would be extremely interesting um I, I thought denise crosby was great uh there were definitely some people when we did get to her death episode that were like oh i you know i don't i don't think it's any loss at all i never think about tasha and that, that comment actually surprises me because this the people commenting that presumably knew about this episode, so that's interesting. But even that aside, uh, you know, it was kind of like when Dr. Crusher returned. It was kind of like right back into like, oh yeah, this is Tasha. This is her role. Yeah. They didn't really change her character that much, and I liked that because we got to see Tasha in this later episode. I agree with you, though. It would be nice to see her in our, in our actual cruise bridge and our actual show. I don't think we get that, unfortunately, but... I don't know how they pulled it off, but I guess just to be able to do it is awesome. I mean, just to be able to bring someone back like this, um, I would say it's never been done, but also because no one's ever left the show before her. So yeah, yeah. I, I think I mean, it's Star Trek. It's what twenty fourth century, twenty third century. They can, I think, twenty fourth. They can do something to bring her back. Make, make the amends. Gene's gone at this point. We have this great guy. His name's Cliff Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> he can direct some good episodes for you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but no, who's in, Who's the one guy? He's a uh, Battle Circle after the guy. What's his Ronald name? Ronald Moore. Ronald Moore. Because Ronald Moore works. Yeah. yeah. It's like, hey, it's a little different now. We kind of know what we're doing. We have a good team. I wonder if coming back to do this episode, you know, she realized that or, or got a different vibe. I would also be curious to see, you know, you know, behind the scenes or interviews or something. I'm not going to look it up right now, but, you know, one day how she felt about it. And if she, people, you know, have said that I know she had regrets about leaving the show, but did she have regrets especially because of coming back for this episode. I would be interested. I don't know yeah. how much or if ever she appears again in Star Trek. I, I I never thought she did. Like, Not that it was completely off the table, but I was always like, oh, she's not coming back. So like her being in this, and now it makes me think, like, how many times does she come back? Because it doesn't show her die. No, it doesn't. Which is it's very, feel like I feel like, deliberately done. Her and the guy that she falls in love with, yeah, the shooter, neither of them are shown after they go through the thing. Or their corpses are just somewhere in, in this wreckaged ship yeah. from back in the day. Because we are told that it does, you know, blow up. It is destroyed in our timeline. Yeah. But they could have survived. They could have taken a shell. They could have done something. And plus, we'll never know because the crew that exists now, whatever happened back then is just whatever happened for them. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, yeah, true. So there's no reason to bring it up. It's like, oh, yeah, that happened. So it might be completely different. But we're true. You know what I mean? Yeah, because I was thinking about that. Like, we had never heard about the Enterprise C before this episode. What happened to it? We, just, I mean, I just assumed it was just decommissioned eventually. Yeah, it's been 100 years since from, what, A to D. Yeah, yeah so. so 
yeah, I wonder. It, I don't know, man. Now my brain's freaking yeah, you, out. You leave it wide open. There's, <laughs> yeah. there's room for anything can happen. Uh, I guess I wish I would. I would have liked to see uh, a second farewell, or like you know, like our timeline and that Tasha. You know, although it wouldn't hit the same because it's not our Tasha. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know what, what what they would do there. Or even with that crew on that bridge, like they don't really get much of a goodbye. She spent time with that crew. She has the really nice scene with Data and the turbo lift, which I, I mean, them just having a scene together is like, thank God, you know, that's so awesome because Data doesn't have a ton to do here in this episode. Yeah, no, he's kind of just straight laced, you know. And he's the expositional, you know, for the most part. Yeah. But having that scene with Tasha was excellent and, uh, Cool to get to see Guinan interact with Tasha since clearly that's you know hasn't happened yet. And kind of shitting on the uh, the the season one episode died a meaningless death. You know it's like Ugh. I wonder how much Meta was involved in that in terms of like yeah meaningless you fucking left the show yeah <laughs> meaningless death and she's like hmm, yeah. I'm surprised if you know what we just threw that in there on our own. <laughs> she had personal feelings about it. Why did you leave the I wanted to be on the you know I wanted to be a regular on this show. Um, I do love uh, Tasha and Trigger McGavin's relationship. This whole like destined to die lover relationship going on. It's like you, like these two people are not supposed to be alive right now for completely different reasons. And I like how they like bond over that, and they possibly die together or continue to find a new way to live together. I thought yeah. that whole thing was great. Another small moment I really liked was Doctor Crusher examining. Captain Garrett. You need at least another 24 hours. Nonsense. Doctors always overprotect their patients. And captains always push themselves too hard. I love that back and forth. Mm -hmm. Because usually you only see that with her and Picard, because he's the captain there. So getting to see it with another character we don't know was nice. It reminded me of the scene they cut out of the bonding, uh, which we reacted to those deleted scenes where she's talking with Worf. Yeah. Her, you know, but that didn't make the cut. This one did. It was very similar vibes, so I like to see it. Yeah, I'm glad a version got out somewhere. But I just wished uh, two things. One, that more characters died uh, before the ship got through the uh, the wormhole. Like characters started dropping off one by one to the point where like Picard is like last one standing. Maybe some blood, you know. He's like the last, you know. It's like some cheesy line, whether it's make it so or engage right before, you know, he's about to die or whatever. And lasers going across. Ship goes through. Wow. And then like you hear like Lieutenant, and then back of the head, it's Worf's head turns and then like we're back to our time just something where it's like a reveal where instead of just you know bright bridge and then you just see picard it was the least cinematic thing they could do just like a regular cut to like you know what i mean yeah there's something where it just like it's it's dimly lit because a shadow of something else and it's just the yellow shirt and it's wharf again you know what i mean there's so it, much they could have done something it could have been anything um i agree it was very much uh like i was on the edge of my seat and Riker dies. I'm like, oh shit, Picard jumps over. He starts battling him. The two ships are coming in. Uh, you know, the Enterprise C is going through the thing and then just cut to the old bridge. It, it, was, it was very like, oh, like that's almost why I didn't believe it when it ended. I'm like, oh, that's it? Like, I, I, maybe I expected too much because we had such a cinematic feel the whole episode yeah, that yeah. it was like, all right, back to TNG. <laughs> yeah. And it was like, oh. Or, or, just, or just something where it's like, Picard like this, you know, or Picard like, and then just, and it's like his regular face again, or something, or the the Worf reveal. I don't know. There's something yeah. you could instead of just cut and then just brightly lit bridge and Picard standing there. It's like, eh, you know what I mean? Ran out of money, maybe. Ran out of ideas. I'm very interested in why. If that's us just thinking that, or if there's a reason that it was like so abrupt, like they just didn't know how to cut back because the. To have that in the beginning, the shape, and then not to do that at the end is just like yeah. kind of odd. It's tough because it won't be perfectly lined up. Mm -hmm. That's the only reason. But you can have at least one character, like frame it, just one person's face. Just do Picard. Like you could have. Yeah, just do Picard. Yeah. yeah. And then just, you know, cut back to Picard's regular face in the chair like this. And then like maybe it's Picard like in battle like this in his chair. And then like it's super zoomed in and then, and then zooms out when Picard's like this. Or if you wanted to get really weird with it, show Tasha on the sea, tactical officer, her and Worf, and then it's Worf, you know, and then he for a second is like, oh, you know, something yeah. weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but then like, and then Picard goes like, you know, is it Lieutenant Worf at this point, right? I think like, so. Like, Lieutenant Worf, you know, Lieutenant Worf, and he's like, oh, yeah, you know, but anyway, 
whatever. Yeah. It's a great episode. Just, yeah, just, just, yeah, just fan casting here. It um, was just a weird moment. Like, it just felt weird after this, like, huge, probably the most intense moment of TNG, maybe. Yeah, yeah. And then it was just, like, bridge. It's old a, bridge. Yeah, it's over. Um, <laughs> or just, like, a moment of, did it work? The suspense. This, yeah, yeah, that suspense where it's, like, or it's completely black or just something where it's, like, you know, let us sit in that moment, like, holy fuck. Because it was, like, oh, oh. And, like, Riker's dead. People are dying. And then just, a, oh. Yeah. And then bring it back in. Yeah. Um, what do you think Jordy was drinking at the end? Cranberry juice? Oh, you don't think it was prune juice? Yeah, it looked a little bit it looked a bit red. It was red, yeah. I don't know. I'm I'm at this point they've had so many weird liquids in ten forward that I think that you know it was surprising that it was prune juice at the beginning because I'm like, oh it's not some weird futuristic drink. <laughs> it's just prune juice. I would enjoy the target audience on the cosmic journey, feeling so immense. back then is just whatever happened.